right, guys, back for Lulu's Mysterious Mission. We have two more chapters. We're on chapter 21. And when we ended chapter 20 last time, remember, she was um, looking for that last clue in the bottom of the chest. So here we go. Chapter 21. While Lulu was busy searching, Miss Zielinski watched and waited, not saying a single word till Lulu plucked from that bottom drawer a silver disc that hung from a silver chain and upon which were boldly inscribed the letters M.M., then standing at her tallest and straightest, Miss Zielinski declared, mission accomplished, after which she carefully clasped the chain with its gleaming disc around Lulu's neck. This disc, she said, hereby certifies that you have completed your first mysterious mission. My hearty congratulations, double L. Lulu was almost fainting this time with joy. You're giving me a code name? I've got my very own code name. From now on, everyone calls me double L. I'm afraid I must remind you, Miss Zielinski coldly replied, that this is what's known as a covert operation. And covert means secret, undercover, hush hush. You may not tell anyone, anyone, unless they're a fellow spy. Your code name, or that you're being trained in spycraft. And you'll need to remove that disc from your neck before anybody sees it and put it away where nobody ever will. But Lulu was now in her most impossible give me what I want mode, meaning that she was being a pain in the butt. I hate this. I hate this a lot. I really hate this, she said. I want to wear my silver disc. I want to be called double L. What's the point of being a spy if I can't tell Mabel and Fleischman and all the kids at school and Harry Potter? She meant the other Harry Potter. And my mom, my dad, and Mr. B and everyone. Miss Zielinski began unclasping Lulu's silver chain. We'll do it my way, or I take back your disc. Furthermore, I'll deny whatever you say about me, or you being a spy. I, I'll swear that you're, you're making it up, that you're telling lies, that you're imagining things. And I'll say it so many times that very soon your reputation will be dog poop. Miss Zielinski looked at her watch. Your parents, she said, will be here in a couple of hours. You'd better decide what you're going to do. There was a heavy silence in the living room. Lulu silently stared at Miss Zielinski. Miss Zielinski silently stared back. 10, 15, 20, 25. 25 minutes went by before they even started talking. And it wasn't until a few seconds before Lulu's mom and her dad were due home that Lulu and Miss Zielinski cut a deal. Lulu, much, as much as she hated it, swore never to mention her spy training or her code name and promised to hide her disc in a safe, in a safe place. Miss Zielinski swore to train Lulu in spycraft whenever Lulu's mom and her dad went away. She also solemnly promised that when Lulu grew up and applied for a job as a spy, she'd write a letter saying nice things about her, unless Lulu didn't deserve having nice things said about her, or unless Lulu changed her mind and decided she'd rather be president of the United States. So here's her necklace. But then Lulu's parents came home and almost ruined everything. Rushing through the door and dropping their suitcases on the floor, they threw their arms around Lulu and started sobbing. Oh, my precious, my darling, my treasure, wailed her weeping mom. We missed you so very much. We hardly could stand it. Oh, pumpkin, oh, sweet pea, her dad said, hugging her tight and soaking her shoulder with his hot tears. It was awful being without you. We will never, never, never do this again. Lulu was instantly on alert. Do what again? She demanded. Her parents answered together. We will never go away without you. Never. Lulu was shocked beyond shocked. This was a nightmare, a disaster, a catastrophe. She felt that she was about to lose her mind. How would Miss Zielinski be able to train me, her, train her to be a spy if her parents were never going to leave her behind? You have to, you've got to. You need to take more vacations, Lulu shouted. You need some private grown-ups only time. You've got to get, you've got to go away a lot. I will be just fine being babysat by darling Miss Selinsky. So here's her parents when they came back. You can see Lulu's face, her parents. So she's really changed from the beginning, huh? Lulu was now jumping up and down, and although it wasn't a tantrum, it was close, shouting, go, you have to go, 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 go. Lulu's mom and her dad were dazed and perplexed and completely confused and full of questions. Now remember, she didn't want them to go, so now this is a totally different feeling, right? What's going on here? What was she saying? Why was she acting in this peculiar way? Hadn't she only a week ago carried on most unpleasantly when they told her that they were going away without her? 
So why was she now insisting that she wanted them to go away without her? Lulu, sweetie, her mom began. Lulu, honey, her dad began. What's gotten into you? They asked together. And Lulu, looking first at her mom and then at her dad, replied, I guess I'm just an extremely difficult child. That brings us to our final and last chapter. But remember, Lulu's parents, when they left, remember, she was pitching a fit. She was not happy. She was yelling, complaining, rolling around, wanting to go with them, thinking she was sick. Now they come home and she's telling them to go back. So let's see what's going to happen in the last chapter. See you guys.